For every perfect birth, there is an imperfect circumstance. They're all in the same sack, and they can get tangled up in their umbilical cord. For every ordinary event, fetus is severely premature. The risks are, are many. An extraordinary exception. And sometimes babies can go into what we call congestive heart failure. For every happy ending. They are so beautiful. A difficult beginning. There's nothing really we can do about it other than hope and pray that, that it'll go our way. These are special deliveries against all odds. 24 hours ago, 22-year-old Ashley Morgan was rushed to the mother and child hospital at Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center in Denver, aboard an emergency transport helicopter. Okay. Only 25 weeks into her pregnancy, Ashley is a high-risk case. From 2 o'clock in the morning till 7.30 in the morning, there was a big change. I mean, it, from, from normal to flying to Denver. Have to be right there. Her baby isn't due for three months. But yesterday morning, Ashley's water broke 245 miles away in Rollins, Wyoming. Checking to see how low the baby's head is, see how far she's dilated, and right now she's fully dilated. We actually found bacteria in the amniotic fluid. It presents a, a very dangerous situation for both baby and mom. I knew something was a cult right there. I didn't think it was to that extent. And the baby's head is, is right here. The bacteria in the amniotic fluid could spread to the uterus, compromise future reproductive function, and in the worst possible situation, actually spread to the mother's bloodstream. And that can be life-threatening. Do you feel an urge to push? No. Because of the bacteria, the only treatment is to induce labor. Take, put your hand behind your knee deliver the baby and administer antibiotics to both mother and child. It's pretty risky with a baby that's only 25 weeks old, but they told us they have an 80% ratio of babies doing just fine at 25 weeks, but there's, of course, issues with his lungs and brain hemorrhaging. There is a chance that, that things won't be normal. In that case, we would have to accept it. At this point, we're concerned with this baby having normal mental capacity and a, a normal, healthy lifestyle. So you're ready to push this baby out. By the time this baby takes his first breath, he will be at risk for multiple developmental problems. But the greatest risk is whether or not he will even survive. OK, move the table, please. We'll go into nursery one, which is probably where your little boy will be admitted. Michelle and Chris Jaramillo are touring the NICU at Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center to see where their baby will spend the first few days of his life. There's a lot of babies in there, a lot of sick babies, so. Michelle is 34 weeks pregnant with a baby who suffers from a rare blood disorder that affects about one out of every 10,000 births. We didn't know that my husband and I had this genetic defect. It's uh, neonatal uh, alloimmune thrombocytopenia, or NAIT. It's a big word, but basically means that uh, got the defect in there that causes him to have the very low platelet count. Michelle's antibodies are destroying the baby's platelets. So for the past 14 weeks, Michelle has been donating her own platelets to save the baby's life might not be able to clot himself or prevent himself from bleeding, and um, infants or babies like that bleed, tend to bleed into their brain, and then it can cause damage or, or, or death. We're just gonna collect around 170, 180 mils of plasma containing platelets. The platelets are reintroduced to the baby through the umbilical cord. He basically goes in and finds a place in the actual cord and um, transfuses my platelets into the baby so that it can assist him in clotting blood if, if need be. NAIT has affected all three of Michelle's pregnancies. You're a part of the family. I was 14 weeks when I lost my first baby. It very well could have been uh, the baby, you know, had something to do with 
the NAIT, so we just don't know. Her second pregnancy was successful, but that baby, too, had a clotting problem. Yeah, we didn't have any idea until after um, his circumcision wasn't healing. He was very jaundiced, and they just started doing some tests and found out that he was having really low blood um, platelets. The longer the baby stays in the womb, the more platelets he'll need. Show him your big brother. 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 Show him your We are anxious, very anxious, to find out whether we're going to have this little guy today. For sure. Yeah. See ya. See ya, honey. Keep us posted. I have not been outside in over a week. But it's such a beautiful day. I need some fresh air and a little bit of sunshine. 31-year-old Jennifer Polson is already the mother of two. And very soon, she is about to become the mother of two more. I haven't shaved my legs in so long, I can feel the hairs <laughs> blowing in the breeze. <laughs> I have Momo twins, which is short for monoamniotic and monocronionic, which means that when my egg split, it was several days later. So they're all in the same sack. There's no separating membrane between them at all. And they can get tangled up in their umbilical cords. So it's um, kind of scary. Momo twins are rare occurring in only about one out of every 50,000 births. In order for the twins to survive, Jennifer has been on bed rest and monitored constantly for the past two months. I came in in the middle of March and we had a St. Patrick's Day and then Easter and then my birthday and then my sixth wedding anniversary and then um, this coming Sunday will be Mother's Day. So it's been quite a while. Something shows up looking kind of suspicious, then we can rush her back to the OR and get the kids out real fast. Where if she's at home, they'd probably be gone by the time she got to the hospital. These are both the baby's heart rates. This one is baby A, which is this one right here. This one is baby B. And then this is for my contractions if I have some, which occasionally I do. The tangled umbilical cords could cut off the life supply to the twins. There's a 50% chance they could die in utero. I do monitoring and I check my blood pressure and I check all my vitals every couple hours. Babies will kind of clue you in when something's not quite right and it's time to get born. Alrighty, you pass. Thank you. <laughs> Another day. I miss my children. I miss my husband. I miss my house. <laughs> but uh, that's life. And this is what's best for the baby, so. Okay, okay now I just want you to relax. Just relax as the baby's going to slide down. After being in labor for 15 hours, Perfect job. Ashley is finally about to deliver. His name's going to be Caden. His middle name is Mathil, and that's a family name. The appearance of bacteria in the amniotic fluid convinced doctors that he was safer outside of the womb than in, but barely. Term pregnancy is 40 weeks. Getting the lungs working for us. So obviously this fetus is very premature, severely premature as we call it, and uh, the risks are, are many. Caden Mathil Morgan weighs barely two pounds. His status is critical. In the U.S., only about 400 babies born each year are this premature. Okay. Is he smaller than you thought? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he'd be a little bigger than that. Each one of his organs are essentially 15 weeks early. And the, the process of his nursery course is to allow the development of all those organs while we now use them for life support. 
the first one we have to deal with is his lungs. Yeah, that was faster than I thought it would be, too. We're going to let you hold him just a second here. I'll get done doing this. He's now 12 minutes old. Don't give him to me. Yeah, he's yeah. perfect. He's got all he is. He's a perfect, ten fingers and all ten toes. Yeah. Little baby. That's, that's all bruised. That is all bruising. But little Caden is not perfect. He weighs barely enough to survive. The next four to six hours are crucial. Every year, approximately 500 high-risk women are transported to the mother and child hospital at Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center. I'm going to numb up your skin just a little bit in the spot where I'm going to put the um, amnio needle. Women like 18-year-old Amanda Hewitt from Rock Springs, Wyoming, whose water broke at 30 weeks. So nothing wrong with the baby's spine. The pregnancy for the first, I think it was, five months was going OK, and then I went in about six months and was in and out of premature labor. So I've been in and out of the hospital the past month and a half or so. First thing you're going to feel is the burning sensation from the numbing medicine. Okay, now I need you to stay very still, okay? It's important to make sure that the, the baby is, in an, is not in an infected environment. The best way to do that is by sampling some of the amniotic fluid and sending it to the lab. Okay, that's it. Good job. And we're not gonna have the father here until the baby's born. And he'll be notified, I'm pretty sure. It's up to her, totally. But right now, I'm her support system. I hope I'm doing a good enough job. Amanda is already four centimeters dilated. 10 would be the complete dilatation of the cervix. So at this point, we're just trying to Keep that baby in. So how, what were we rating these contractions on a zero to 10 scale? Well, that one that I just had was probably about a nine. Doctors give her magnesium sulfate to stop the labor, but the drug has its own serious side effects. Kidneys aren't working properly to excrete the drug. It could build up in her lungs. Um, at high enough levels, could cause a respiratory arrest or even um, a cardiac arrest. Amanda's baby weighs just a little over three pounds. Let's see if we can get it. When you listen to her saying, I just want it now, now is because she's tired. You know, she's been on medication for about a month and a half now, and it's on again, off again, hospital trips, uh, weekly, just about. Yeah. So it's just, I guess everybody's just exhausted. Every day the baby stays in the womb, his chances of surviving improve dramatically. Okay, gang. I am nervous and I'm excited. It's been so long. We're looking for lung maturity at 34 weeks or beyond because it's our opinion that uh, with Momo twins, the risk-benefit ratio with mature lungs beyond 34 weeks favors putting them in the nursery because they're at risk for um, having critical cord entanglement any time. Jennifer Polson has been at Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center for almost 10 weeks. She is pregnant with twins, sharing an amniotic sac. I really hope that that these tests come back good to where the babies are ready to come out. Her doctor is getting a new ultrasound of the twins because their lungs may not be maturing properly. Now we're gonna get a blended lung maturity, obviously, since they both are contributing to the pool. I think that's the best we're gonna be able to do. We're looking for a spot of amniotic fluid, so you if you just hang on here for a sec. What fluid do you draw? About 10 cc's, two teaspoonfuls. Uh, we should know within an hour, hour and a half. Oh, wow. So in an hour, an hour and a half, we'll know if we're having them tomorrow? You got it. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be close, just by eyeballing it. Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> right. See you in a bit. 
Jennifer is hoping that the endless weeks of waiting are almost over. Caden Morgan is a couple of hours old and weighs only one and a half pounds. He's fighting for his life. There's 741 grams. Before they're born, you don't really know what to expect. You don't get too high hopes, you know. I think now I got high hopes, and I just I want everything to be okay now, you know. He has an endotracheal tube in. He's on a ventilator. We have lines into his umbilical cord, and we're currently waiting for his x-ray to see what the status of his lungs are. Some of the blood work that we got this morning showed that he has a very low white count, and white blood cells help fight infection. At 9 a.m., another blow. The neonatal cardiologist finds that a blood vessel located between the lung artery and the aorta is flooding Caden's lungs with blood. The blue flow going forward is into the lung artery, so all the orange that you see here on this uh, echocardiogram is abnormal blood flow. In a very young, immature lung, uh, that interferes with the baby's ability to oxygenate and otherwise circulate blood. Caden needs immediate surgery to tie off that vessel and protect his already fragile lungs. The risk of not doing it is continued lung damage from the increased blood flow. And sometimes babies can go into what we call congestive heart failure uh, if it's not done within the first several days or weeks after birth in a premature baby. But there's a serious complication. Overnight, an ultrasound of Caden's head showed signs of a brain bleed. We're hoping that it's just a small swelling or, or a bleeding that already happened and is, is done happening because his blood count last night was good. The worst case scenario would be that the, either the um, hemorrhage extends, gets bigger, or that um, the ventricles uh, continue to enlarge. But if you have a, a clot that's occupying space in the brain, that area of the brain is going to be damaged. The surgery will change Caden's blood pressure, which could affect the bleed. But Trent and Ashley are not ready to give up on their son. Not yet. Of course, we want them to do everything possible to save him. You know, I mean, anything they have to do to keep him going is what we want until it gets to the point where it's not good for him, it's not good for us. Well, we'd like to know as soon as possible, oh, yeah. of course. We'll be out yeah. and waiting when we get my sure. son and my mom is out there, so. Right. Yes, it is. It's been 24 hours since Amanda Hewitt's water broke. But at 30 weeks, it's too soon for the baby to come out. She's been given magnesium sulfate to stop the labor, but it's making her sick. It makes your eyes burn. It makes your eyes feel like they're on fire. You can't see. It's all, everything's blurry. You get really hot. You feel like... You're just dead. And then when you get off of it, your muscles are all sore. You have a headache. They can't get rid of it. It's just horrible stuff. I don't like it. During the night, Amanda refused to take any more magnesium. Well, if we put her back on the magnesium sulfate, we might be able to prolong her pregnancy a little bit longer. And at this point in her pregnancy, every day and every week counts, really, for this preemie. I'd like to keep them in. But it'd be nice to have him because I'm really sick. And it's taking a real big toll on my body. Yes, there is a baby inside of her. Yes, it's important to keep the baby inside of her. But a mother is important, too. This is not a normal pregnancy. It's just too much of a risk for both of them. And I'm not willing to take that chance with her or the baby. Your mom's going to help you do this, OK? Michelle's baby has had 14 weeks of interuterine blood transfusions to increase his platelet count so he won't bleed to death. Now she's waiting to see if he's ready to be born. It's mature. 
So we're going. All right. Now you know we have a baby, huh? Yay. <laughs> That's the news we wanted. So now we're going to tune them up. Michelle's platelets have been harvested for one final transfusion, which will be split before and after delivery. We only have 50 cc's. That's good. The 50 cc's are administered interuterinally through an extremely delicate procedure. If this needle accidentally pricks a vessel, it could cause a serious bleed. They actually hook up the tube and transfuse the platelets in there. And, uh, it's really pretty crazy and neat that you can actually see them flowing through on the ultrasound machine. You can actually see them pouring into his system through the cord. Okay, last 10. Almost there. Good. See you, Michelle. In a couple of hours, Michelle and Chris will find out if the transfusions have meant the difference between life and death for their new baby. Maybe being on your hands and knees? 23-year-old Chantelle Powell is expecting her first baby. Yes. Oh. Oh. At 39 weeks, oh. everything should be normal. Oh, God. But it's not. I had a preterm labor in my sixth oh. month. They thought I was going to have him in my sixth month. Chantel narrowly missed having a premature baby. Oh. But now, she has been in labor for four days. And the baby doesn't want to come out. They broke my water, and they gave me some Pitocin now. So I'm a little uncomfortable. Oh. Uh, water's been broken about 12 hours now. She definitely should have made it a lot more progress than she's made at this point. You've been contracting away, you've been watching this baby, and you're just not changing. I'm hoping the lab is not too busy today, you know, that they can have the results quickly. Jennifer is waiting to hear if she can deliver her twins tomorrow. They're not due for six weeks but their tangled umbilical cords are putting their lives in jeopardy. It's not mature. Remember, it's not my fault. <laughs> it, a, it's good. You know, there's, a good, there's good news to that. Let me tell you what the good news is. <laughs> I have to wait another week. Well, that's the bad news. The good news is that there's nothing stressing these kids out that have, that have prompted or provoked them to get their act together early so that uh, they're just hanging out, not thinking anything's a problem. Jennifer has no choice but to wait. I'm gonna have to, you know, and hopefully nothing crazy happens this next week, you know, where um, they have to do an emergency procedure. Another week, guys, another week. Sorry. Barely a day and a half old, and weighing just one and a half pounds, Caden Morgan is having surgery. The idea is to get in and out quickly, minimize the uh, amount of time under anesthesia, the amount of time that we're compressing the lung. Caden has a blood vessel known as a ductus that is causing too much blood to flow into his underdeveloped lungs. It needs to be tied off, but the vessel is so small, the repair will be challenging. The ductus basically puts the baby in heart failure. It's the same as the heart failure that a 70-year-old person might have. Okay, so now I have my clamp around. Only about 5% of severely premature babies undergo this type of surgery. Without it, they can suffer respiratory and heart failure. The tie is now around the ductus. Okay, so ductus is closed. Now the baby's heart should be able to work much more efficiently. And we'll just close things up the way we can. Add some. Everything went great, um, no problems whatsoever. Just a little tiny incision under the left shoulder blade. And um, he should, hopefully, this will help stabilize things a lot for him, okay? I 
sat here during the surgery with my nerves racked. <laughs> I was nervous, but I am confident. And I, I think the only reason I'm confident is because I've got calluses on my knees from praying. Every little thing they can tell us that went okay is just one little thing to make us feel better about it all. So, and that's a big thing. Surgery on a little bit of baby is a big, big thing. So since it went okay, that's we feel great about that. But the night ahead will prove to be long and more difficult than anticipated. Baby's head's coming down now that the water's gone. For two days, doctors have been trying to keep Amanda Hewitt from going into labor. But I keep reassuring her that one less contraction you're going to feel. One less contraction you're going to feel. Yeah, with every contraction, more fluid's going to come out. You're gonna but Amanda's body can't hold on to the 30-week-old fetus any longer. <laughs> Look at that square. Do you squeeze my hand. It does, I know. Honey, I... Okay. I'll breathe. I'll breathe. Okay, man, I'm gonna put this underneath your bottom here, okay? And then, okay, Amanda, Amanda, I want you to take a deep breath in. Now I want you to open your legs. There you go, the baby some room. There you go, bear down, bear down, bear down, bear down. And breathe. Amanda, push again, it'll feel better. Yes, you can. Come on, honey. Deep breath. There you go. The head's, he's right there. I can't do it no more. Yes, you can. Let him numb your bottom. take him out, it hurts, it hurts. Just turn my skin. He's almost out. His head's right there. Come on. His head's right there. It hurts so bad. Come on. Come on. Do another contract. Two minutes. You're going to be a mommy. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's almost over. There's his head. He's out. Can I breathe for you? Oh, my God. Push, push, push. Tristan Matthew weighs barely three and a half pounds. Good job. Beautiful, Amanda. Yes. I was crying with him. <laughs> I just started crying because it was just a shock. I didn't know what to, how to feel or what to think, or I just cried. <laughs> there is a chance that we may have to put a breathing tube in and help them out a little bit, give them some medicine. Tristan is immediately moved to the neonatal ICU, where he'll be put on oxygen to support his underdeveloped lungs. Right now, she's just listening to the heart and lungs, make sure that they sound OK, that there's no ret fluid retained in his lungs, and that he's moving air, breathing well on his own. And I'm just attaching monitors so that we can monitor his heart rate and his breathing rate up on the screen up there. And the grunting noise he's making, he's trying to disperse that fluid and open up his little air sacs. The CPAP we're going to give him is just going to apply pressure into his lungs to help pop in the, those little air sacs open. I'm going to have to let you talk to the mommy, though. Hang on. I'm very glad it's all over with. So I guess everything's okay. I don't know. I, but I guess he's okay. But at such a low birth rate, Tristan is not okay. The next few days are critical. Caden Morgan had surgery near his heart less than 24 hours ago. The surgery was was critical. I mean, it had to be done. That's the kind of decisions that you're faced with is do you or don't you? Now his parents are faced with yet another tragic situation. I think the ventricles are larger. Caden's second ultrasound shows an increase in his brain bleed. It's definitely bigger, isn't it? Yeah. I think getting about five millimeters there, whereas here, I'm probably getting about seven millimeters. It's quite a large hemorrhage there, really. I'm super concerned about developmental. 
outcome. Uh, however, he is still young, you know, only 48 hours of age, and uh, that bleed could could continue to to extend. So we'll we'll need to watch that very carefully and uh, repeat his ultrasound in 48 hours. I, you know, I think his lungs are liking that surfactant. Look at there. See how his chest is yeah. moving. Every time you talk to a doctor, you wanted to tell him he's great and he couldn't be any better. And, and I know that can't happen, but it doesn't mean I don't want it to. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep going in there and sitting with him and wait until they give me good news. They have to give me some sooner or later. They said on Monday I might be able to hold it. So I'm really looking forward to that. That'll make me feel like I'm a mom finally. It's hard to feel like a brand new mom when you can't hold him and do all those things you're supposed to do. I'm hopeful. I think everything's gonna be okay. We just we don't know. Chantel has been in labor for almost five days with little progress. Natural childbirth is out of the question. You feeling anything? Nothing? These guys do good work. To make matters worse, the baby had a bowel movement in the womb. If he ingests any of it, he could get a serious infection. You're doing great, Chantel. We're just taking our time. We want this to look good for you, right? That's a big baby. Once Chantel's baby makes his debut, it's easy to see why a C-section was inevitable. This is a good sized baby boy here, Chantel. Alrighty, Chantel. That is one big baby boy. He sounds great. Chantel, that kid was not going to be fitting. We could have been in labor for another month and that kid wasn't coming out. Immediately, the medical team clears his chest and lungs of fecal matter. I'm going to get the rest of the stool out of his stomach and out of the back of his airway. I'm going to give him a little bit of oxygen. Unless the baby develops signs of an infection or anything that we hadn't seen up until now in the course of her labor, the baby should be ready to go home with her in just a couple of days. Watch his head there. Watch your step. Navon James Willis weighs seven pounds, six ounces. Play right in my hands. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Ready? There's two and four. Well, you tell me I got the video camera so we can have the action shots and a memento here of some of this stuff and regular camera for the still photograph. She loves the scrapbook and put all that together, so I've got to make sure I do my job and get some of those too. Michelle and her husband Chris are in the OR, about to have a baby. Oh, come on out of there, you. Look at this dark hair. Huh? I gotcha. I gotcha. You little son of a gun, no platelet kiddo. Let's get gases. Add a platelet count on this board, okay? There you go, take him over there. He looks pretty stiffy. He's, he's full of platelets. At 5.57 p.m., Caden Jaramillo is born. Because of the extra dose of platelets right before delivery, baby Caden is out of the woods for now. He looks great. Color's good. He's breathing fine. Super, buddy. Thank you. But the next couple of weeks are crucial. The other thing they're going to do is they're going to go over the baby very carefully 
uh, with some imaging technique, whatever they decide, they meaning the neonatologists and the pediatric radiologists, to make sure there hasn't been any bleeding while the baby's been in utero. Let's see you. Now that he's out of the womb, Caden will be struggling to survive for the first few days. 18 inches. 18 inches? Yeah. Super. Good idea. The baby will stay here until he can maintain a, a platelet count uh, without us having to uh, give him a transfusion every few days or so. Back in the OR, Michelle wants to make sure that Caden is the last baby to be inflicted with her genetic disorder. To have another baby would just be, it would, it, I think it just wouldn't be fair to the baby. The chances would be very slim. She has asked doctors to perform a tubal ligation Caden, her special delivery, is the last child she will ever have. It's been five days since Tristan Hewitt's premature birth. It's kind of weird not being pregnant, though, because once you feel like you're full all the time, and you're just pushing down on something that's so hard, and when you have them, you feel so empty, and you, it's just like nothing there when you push. It's pretty weird. <laughs> Amanda was discharged from the hospital yesterday. I can't seem to stay away from him too long. I start missing him, so I'm over here a lot. <laughs> but the baby, born 10 weeks early, is still in the neonatal ICU. Much of the time, he is kept under a special light because he is jaundiced. Looking like he's looking at his weight and his size, I think the potential of having some major problem there is small. But Tristan is improving daily. His only problem right now is he's premature. Even his yellowness is not a big deal, a little bit of jaundice. But right now, it looks like he's doing well. And we'll watch him the next couple of days. He's, he's really at, at some risk for about two more weeks of having a complication. If he gets past that, he's pretty much home free. Tristan isn't going home. Instead, he'll be transferred to a hospital in Wyoming, closer to Amanda, but not yet out of danger. are just a buzzing. They're ready. They're ready. We checked her in at 3 o'clock Friday, March 15th. Ten weeks, four days. Well overdue. The Polson twins are finally ready to come out. Oh. Two more babies, honey. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is the nursery set? Yep, they're ready. You're set. You're set. We are bringing them over. Okay, sterile, everything sterile over there? Okay, don't contaminate Dr. Stetler. I was telling Shane, this is life at its fullest. Say goodbye to your big tummy. Look at the vacuum monster just in case I chase this kid more. Number one. Oh, yeah. What a chunko. Keep your toes out of there, kiddo. Not responsible for toes. Put in my way. Okay. Hi, sweetheart. Go. There we go. In the same sack. Oh, of course she will. <laughs> I found you in there. You Look at this, in case you're wondering. Look at the tangle there. I guess I'll cut it off short here, but it's still tangled. For the past two and a half months, those tangled cords have been threatening the twins' lives. My goodness. Well, at least we didn't screw up the diagnosis, huh? Yeah, that could have been ugly. A divided attention, huh? <laughs> I know. I don't know which one to go to. They're both crying. <laughs> That will be the next 18 years of your life. <laughs> your ears are getting wet here. Those are happy tears. The twins seem healthy, but doctors are cautious. Rocco Paul and Angus Gordon need to go to the neonatal ICU.
Navon James Willis is 12 hours old, and he's in better shape than his mother, Chantel. Is the pain medication working? A little dizzy, a little sore. You can expect to be like that for a couple of hours, sweetie, yeah. Fortunately, the waste product that Navon ingested in utero was completely suctioned out within minutes of his birth. Basically, the baby was watched initially to see if it had breathed any meconium in, but there hasn't been any problems at all. Baby's totally healthy. Beautiful, healthy little boy. Mm. <laughs> it's five days today. At nine o'clock this morning, it was five days. Yeah, I've been losing track of lots of days. <laughs> I have to kind of count to remember when it all started, but... Long days. It's been a heartbreaking five days for Ashley and Trent Morgan. For every small triumph, another setback. We're just praying and hoping that it's a good sign rather than a worse, you know. This morning, Caden will have a third ultrasound on his brain. The last one showed a significant increase in the brain bleed. Hardest thing I've done in a long time is come down here this morning, you know, because you're afraid of the truth, I guess. You know, I want to know, but you're always afraid of the truth, you know, and it's so devastating when it, you know, when it's, it's real. And then that's the hardest part is, is knowing that's, that's it. Okay. Here's May 17th, so, and yeah. this is May 20th. There may be some edema that maybe is a little yeah. less. Yeah. And the vent, the ventricles yes. are about the same, but maybe a little smaller. Okay, great. They're certainly not bigger. Okay, so that's not too yeah. bad. Yay. You know, remember we had talked about the, uh, well, sometimes they, there could be some swelling, and so some of the bright spots that we see on the ultrasound is, is swelling related to having a bleeding in that area, and so we're seeing less of those bright spots today. It's a small area of bleeding in the right frontal part of the brain, and the, the, the sacs uh, are not uh, tremendously enlarged. They may be a little enlarged, and here's they're just kind of borderline enlarged. Well, right now you're thinking that since it hasn't gotten any bigger, it's going to take care of itself eventually? That's generally what happens. Um, but, you know, about an 80% chance of that happening. That's really what I want to do. Yeah. Can I give you a hug? I know, I don't think I'm going to give you a hug. Oh, yeah. Ashley and Trent Morgan are hanging all of their hopes on every small sign of progress. Rocco and Angus Polson are spending their first day of life in the neonatal ICU in much the same manner as the past 35 weeks, together. Yeah, they're used to feeling each other. And they sort of like that, I mean, sort of into each other. Baby B, Rocco is doing good. Uh, Angus, uh, still on a little bit of oxygen. It feels good to get up. I mean, my abdomen is sore, but it feels good to get up. Aren't they beautiful? This one, is, this is Angus, mm -hmm. and this, this is Rocco. We're gonna bust you out, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> they had to put a feeding tube in both of them because they just weren't sucking well enough. Hopefully, you know, in the next day, they'll get that down a little better and uh, we can move on to the graduate nursery, get them out of the NICU. I'm thinking probably a week they'll have to stay. You are the one that was kicking my ribs. And your brother is the one that was punching my bladder. It was definitely worth the wait. They are so beautiful. I'd do it all over again if I had to. Yeah. Ooh. 
and we'll be going home soon. Hi, are you trying to push the bottle back out? Michelle and Chris are waiting to find out when baby Caden will be released from the NICU. <laughs> You're being stubborn. <laughs> so they can take him home. Doctors are still monitoring his blood. He's doing much better than we expected. We're so happy to hear him. He's so handsome. He doesn't need a whole lot of help with breathing anymore. Um, I guess eating would be the next. They did an uh, ultrasound on his head this morning. And I'll just kind of confirm and hopefully put us, at, put us at ease that there was no bleeding that took place, you know, while he was uh, still in, in mom's tummy. We just know that that's going to be fine. And then once he recovers from here, he'll be perfect. We're really happy to um, go home and, and be the four of us. That sounds kind of neat, huh? <laughs> be the four of us and that our special delivery is finally here. Little Tristan today is being back transported to his home hospital in Laramie, Wyoming, uh, to be back with his mom, closer to his hometown. Born 10 weeks early and weighing only three pounds at birth, 10-day-old Tristan Hewitt is being moved to a hospital in Wyoming. Amanda went ahead to wait for Tristan. Uh, she went back home just to get things ready and she's waiting for him to get to the hospital. Uh, basically what he's going to do there is grow and learn how to nipple from a bottle and his mom's going to learn how to take care of him and learn about him and uh, they're just going to prepare him to go home and have her take the best care of him that she can. Doctors in Wyoming will monitor Tristan's progress until his original due date, another two months from now. Caden Morgan is 14 days old, in critical but stable condition. We don't know how to deal with him. We want to go in there and have him tell us everything is going to be fine, and they can't do that. He has uh, some significant risks of neurologic handicaps in terms of a developmental uh, outcome. Is he going to have any um, motor problems? Uh, Know, what's his uh, intellectual capacity going to be? It's really hard to tell at this time, but the fact that the bleeding in his brain was uh, as significant as it is means he's going to have to be watched very closely. Ashley and Trent have been by their baby's side for two weeks, staying at a nearby motel. But Trent has to leave soon, leaving Ashley in Denver alone. When we got here, we had no idea what was going to happen. We we didn't know if we were expecting the very worst or, or the very best, but right now we have him, and that's, that's what we have to look forward right now. We're going to get what we get, and that's, there's nothing really we can do about it other than hope and pray that, that it'll go our way. And If it doesn't, we'll be happy with that, too. Right. 